I'm sure that all of my longtime viewers already know that I love Persona 3. I've briefly mentioned things that I like about it and made some comparisons to the other games, but I don't really want to get too deep into my affinity for this game just yet. I have another video in the works for that coming... sometime. That's all I know for sure. For now, I want to focus on the recent remaster of Persona 3 Portable released on all platforms. It should be absolutely no surprise to you how glad I am that more people will be able to experience Persona 3. Atlas was even kind enough to offer a copy of the Steam version to yours truly. However, I'm not quite here to review Portable as a whole. Rather, I want to give my thoughts on specifically the remaster and address the controversy that's been surrounding it since its release. And before anybody says anything, yes, it is a remaster. It says so right on the Steam page and it advertised itself as being a remaster. Not that it really changes much, just thought I would point it out so that we can skip the semantics. No specific story spoilers will be mentioned, but I will be showing gameplay footage from the first in-game month or so. For the most part though, this video should be pretty safe to watch. So the first and most obvious question that's burning in a lot of people's minds is, why did they choose to port Persona 3 Portable? Most of you are aware of this already, but I'll give the short version to recap. There are two dominant versions of Persona 3 that people will lean towards. Persona 3 Fess is a straight upgrade from the original Persona 3 on PlayStation 2, released just a year after the original release. Persona 3 Portable is a remake that was released in 2009 for the PSP, taking more after the gameplay adjustments from Persona 4, as that game became a huge hit. While the visual presentation was a downgrade due to UMD limitations, some people would consider this version of the game better because of its simplified gameplay, as well as the addition of a female protagonist with her own social links and soundtrack. Right off the bat, there's already a lot of compromise between these two versions. Honestly, I have no problem with the decision to port Portable and not Fess. I'm perfectly comfortable and able to go back to the PS2 version of Fess whenever I want. It would have been nice to get a remaster of Fess, but that would have opened a whole different debate. It would have simply shifted from complaints about Portable's 2D maps and visual novel style to how the lighting in the remaster is too bright and where's the FEMC or where's all this other stuff from Portable. What people wanted was never a remaster. What they want is a new hybrid version that will probably never exist. So why Portable? There is no absolute confirmed answer for this. A lot of the answers I've heard are merely speculation, stuff ranging from how they wanted to preserve the female protagonist, to the source code being either lost or too much of a mess to work with, or perhaps they chose Portable just for the streamlined mechanics. However, there is one particular answer I found that I'm quite convinced by. It all comes down to one factor. And that thing happens to be called renderware. There's a very great chance that many of your favorite games from the 2000s were made on this engine. Before there was Unity and Unreal, there was Renderware. It should come as no surprise to you that the PS2 Mega 10 games were also crafted on this engine. Renderware no longer exists. Long story short, EA brought out Criterion, the company that made Renderware. The other video game titans weren't too keen on buying software from one of their competitors, and eventually EA just did nothing with it. They couldn't keep up with the other prevalent engines and renderware was discontinued. So even if they did still have the old files for Persona 3 Fess, they can't just port it outright. They would have to re-implement it in a whole different engine, like with Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne. And I'm not sure if people would have liked that either. Persona 3 Portable and Persona 4 Golden, despite using the same assets as their original counterparts, were not on the same renderware engine and thus were easier to port. And cheaper. Which brings me to my next point, and it's going to sound really bad. Alright, you've heard it all at this point. Very obvious AI upscaling, horribly crushed audio that sounds even worse than the original PSP version. So there's a few things to unpack here. Firstly, 
What made them think that remastering a game with assets specifically made for a 240p screen was a good idea? Like, to hell with the people complaining about the visual novel style. The real question is why they thought putting this onto a large screen was the way to go. With Persona 4 Golden, it made sense because it was just using the original assets. They also actually put the work into remastering those assets. And you know, they actually look pretty good. Portable probably wouldn't have looked that bad if they didn't just throw the assets into Waifu 2X and called it a day. The funniest part is that the studio actually looked at this and thought that this looked good. To clarify, it's just the background and icons that look bad. I'm pretty sure the character portraits were not upscaled and the menus still look pretty damn good. This just makes the background stick out way more though. The quality is inconsistent now. The audio should be pretty self-explanatory, it speaks for itself. A lot of people online are denying it so hard. You got people literally being shown the evidence and responding with, I don't hear the difference, or he must have emulated his game. Not that emulating the game would have made a difference because it's the same audio files. You can literally look up footage of the PSP version on YouTube and make the comparison yourself. Nobody should even have to explain to you what's wrong here. To be completely honest with you, I can at least live with the smudgy backgrounds, even if they do look bad. Audio is important. I made a video talking about how important UI is, and maybe at some point I'll talk about the sound design in Mega 10 too. That's a discussion for another day though. The audio in this game really takes you out of the immersion, and it's just outright grating, especially on long play sessions. These two things aren't enough to kill me or anything, but they seem like such easy things not to screw up that it comes off as... cheap. But the game is cheap, it's only $20! If the best thing you have to justify these things is the low price, then that literally makes this the poor man's persona. This is Persona 3 at home. What I just said probably sounds really bad, so now I'd like to lighten the mood with some good old self-shilling. I'm very grateful for the recent growth my channel has been getting lately. I'm even more grateful for the recent wave of new patrons I've been seeing. I just wanted to give a special shout out to those people. We recently broke $69. Nice. I would love to be able to dedicate more of my time to these videos, especially my longer videos which require a lot more time, work, and effort. There is also YouTube's ever-changing rules to consider. While my channel so far has been untouched, this can easily change abruptly with no warning. If you would like to lend some support, give my Patreon a look. The extra support could take me a long way. So anyways, things were looking pretty doom and gloom a moment before. Let's talk about some of the things that I actually like about the remaster. As I said earlier, I think the UI looks pretty damn good, icons aside. I've always thought that Portable's UI and text boxes looked better than Fess's. It definitely translated the best when jumping from the handheld to the big screen. That's likely because of Persona 3's sort of minimalist menus aesthetic. One really nice touch I like is how they recreated the PSP save menu for the remaster. I'm also a fan of the new custom difficulty settings. Early game experience is really dry, so I actually kept it increased for a little bit, while keeping the battle difficulty set to Maniac. And of course, retries on floors is a nice addition. Unfortunately, there's no separate setting for compendium prices. You have to turn down the battle difficulty to bring the prices back to normal. 
then increase it again afterwards. The game performs very well, I have not had a single performance issue while playing or recording the game. Even Persona 4 Golden had a couple issues with crashes upon release. No such thing has happened to me with Persona 3 Portable as of yet. I'm also so glad that I can move the camera with the right stick in this game instead of needing to use L and R. I know this sounds like a very minuscule thing, and it probably is, but it just really bugged me when I played Portable for the first time. This game is able to run up to 120 FPS on both PC and Xbox. My monitors are only 60 Hz, so I'm sticking with 60, but the frame rate increase is still pretty nice. Not something they would have been able to pull off if they remastered Fess, considering how there would have been a similar problem with Nocturne when you try to force that game into 60 FPS. And of course, I'm very glad to see people enjoying the game as they experience it for the first time. I remember playing this game for the first time myself. It genuinely puts a smile on my face. I ultimately think more people being able to play Persona 3 is a good thing, but there are consequences to releasing this remaster in the state that it's currently in. While it's great that Persona 3 is more openly available to people at a pretty cheap price, it should not feel as bittersweet as it does. While the game is mechanically a good one-to-one -one translation, its issues are so glaringly obvious and should have been so easy to prevent, it comes off as half-hearted and lazy. This genuinely kind of upsets me that when it came to Persona 4 Golden and Persona 5 Royal, they were willing to go the whole mile for those remasters. Sure, 4 might have had some slight issues at first, but you can tell that they put way more effort into it. Persona 5 Royal had a fantastic remaster. It really feels like Persona 3 got the short end of the stick. Like, they didn't care enough to give it the same treatment as the other two games. Keep in mind, this is Persona 3, a game that Atlas acknowledges a lot more than some other games. People say they want Persona 1 and 2 next, if this is how they're gonna handle Persona 3, then I'm dubious about how much care Atlas would put into bringing Persona 1 and 2 to the modern audience. What are new fans of the series going to think? They never played the original versions of Persona 3 Fess or Portable. They could easily make the assumption, based just on this remaster, that Persona 3 must have never been all that great, at least in the visual and audio department. At best, they will doubt the artistic vision for this game. On top of the already existing infighting between Fess and Portable fans, now there will be even more conflict between the people just trying to enjoy the game for the first time and the people who were disappointed with what we got. There will never not be controversy with Persona 3. And normally, I don't like making videos where I mimic everything that everyone else on YouTube has said. I prefer to make videos on topics where I have my own perspective to bring. For this, I honestly have nothing. So why am I doing this then? Why am I joining in on the dogpile? Because I want Atlas to be aware of these issues. Many content creators, as well as myself, were given the game to us by Atlas. They are likely expecting us to express our concerns. If we all unanimously voice ourselves on the same issues, then they will be more likely to listen to us. Atlas isn't perfect, but they are more than capable of listening to feedback. They have a history of listening to criticism. Persona 3 Fess and Persona 5 Royal were designed with the feedback of the original games in mind. Atlas addressed the criticisms towards Nocturne HD... Sort of. Hell, even Soul Hackers 2 got a patch addressing some criticisms. I haven't checked it out myself yet because I don't really want to play Soul Hackers 2 again. Not particularly feeling it right now. That's my whole point though. It'd be best if Atlas addressed our concerns sooner than later. If people start finishing the game before it gets fixed, then this will be the impression people have of Persona 3. This version of Persona 3. Not the theoretical post-patched version. You can do it, Atlas. I know you can. <laughs>